Genesis is the starting point for all of humanity. Okay? All of humanity. You know, the book requires reading materials that we have to put together. You know, the first part is the first part to a five-part section of the Bible. Right? And the uh, the five part of the Bible, which is Genesis, you know, Exodus, Deuteronomy, you know, Leviticus, and Numbers, they are called the Pentateuch. And the Pentateuch, in in in, in Greek word, you know, it's also called Torah. Mm -hmm. Torah means instructions. Torah means what? instructions and the Torah is the basis for all Judaism and is is many times considered to be the law okay you know in the New Testament it is considered the law and the law was in back in the days the children of Israel it was their go guide you know if you want to go somewhere that's your guide if you want to it's like you want to go into the um, what do you call it? The, you want to go into the woods. You don't know what's in there. You need a guide. You need a tall guide. This these five books was their go guide. You know, back in the days, and um, it was their life manual. So it starts off at the very beginning, meaning before the stars, before the seas, before the garden. Before the human race, the beginning began. <laughs> and it all began in God. Are you with me? So, God was present and he was there and his spirit was hovering upon the waters. You, you're going to see that in uh, Genesis 1, you know, in verse... Um, Verse 2, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Okay? And because the Spirit of God was moving upon the face of the waters, God could now recreate. So recreation began. So, um, so before the stars, like I said, God was there, so the Spirit of God was over, you know, over the water. So uh, the Hebrew word for God is the uh, that is used in verse one is Elohim. All right, everybody say Elohim. Elohim. Elohim is the plural version of Eloah. Eloah, E L O A H. Eloah. So, when if, if God has used Eloah, then he will be speaking alone about himself. But now he was speaking in the plural form where it means he didn't do the job alone. Are you with me? Yes, sir. So, and uh, I mean, you know, there are more than one person present. So, God is already made up of multiple parts in the first sentence. That is why, even as a church, we must desire increase. So God, because God does not do things alone. So, um, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit were there before everything ever happened. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And if you look at the structure of the, uh, of, of the dispensation of God upon the face of the earth, you will see these three dispensations. At first, God, was, God the Father was the one ruling directly, you know, communicating directly with humanity. Then, when Jesus came, God the Son, that was his his person, Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. He came and God 
the father allowed him to do everything that it needed to be done. And when Jesus was going, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I will send you the Holy Spirit who will remind you of all things that I've taught you and who will teach you all things. So we are in that dispensation of the Holy Spirit, God the Spirit. Are you with me? So we have God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Meanwhile, in, in verse 2 of the book of Genesis, we, we read, it was the Holy Spirit that was hovering upon the face of the deep. And because it was hovering and breathing on it, was breathing on it to cause a reborn to happen. And that was why God began to speak and he said, let there be. You find that in verse 3, it says, and God said, let there be light. And there was light. So God began to create because the spirit was breathing upon the deep. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, um, then God began to speak things into existence, you know, bringing order into a chaotic situation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now, you can write these three questions down because... Uh, or four questions, very important. Question number one, because this is a Bible study, all right? I'm just, I'm not just preaching, I'm, I'm teaching. What did God create and do for each day? From day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven. I want those answers next meeting from each one of you. All right? Each person. What did God do day one? What did he do day two? Day three? Day four? Day five? Up till day seven? Don't copy your mama's note. Uh, Mama should not copy her son's note. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Don't copy your sister's note. <laughs> so we got to have it in that dimension. You're going to write it. What is it that God did? Now, second question will be like, why do you think God created all of this in the first place? Why did God have to create? You're going to think about it and you're going to give me answers. You send your answers to me. Question number three. Moses states that man was made in God's image. What do you think that means? What do you think it means for God, I mean for man to be made in God's image? And number three, sorry, number four now, isn't it? Question one, two, three, four. Yeah. The fourth question, why do you think God, God rested on the seventh day? And then that gives you the answer for the day seven. <laughs> why do you think God rested on the seventh day? Hallelujah. Oh. Praise God. So those, those are the first four questions. So. God saw that everything he had created was good. But when he created man, he said that it was very good. Are you with me? And God gave Adam dominion over the earth and all that was in it. That doesn't mean we, we are allowed to purposefully destroy what God created as good. But it does mean that humans are more important than the earth and animals. Humans are more, what? Important than the us and the animals. Now listen and listen well. I know science has taught a couple of stuff teaching children that um, um, we are higher animals. Well, I never believe I was an animal anyway. But they said that, but that is their own opinion. The Bible didn't call me a higher animal. All right? We call ourselves what God what the word of God calls us. 
Praise God. You know, we have seen animals that go into extinct. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. They are no more in existence. And it doesn't bother God. And uh, humans, the more some people are dying, the more some people are born. We are like stars that are always being, you know, being reproduced. Stars die, galaxies are born regularly. Human race remains the same. Why? Why didn't you think God can just, just like those animals, you know, went into extinct and just allow humans to go into extinct too? Why? Or don't you think it can happen if God wants it to be? So you've got to be able to figure these things out by reading your Bible. You go to, you know, Genesis chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5. You sit with it on your own and draw out answers to these questions. Are you following me? You know, we're in chapter 1, you know, God uses the, the word Elohim, like I said earlier. You know, for God, there is a shift in chapter 2, verse 4, where his name becomes Yahweh. Now Yahweh is not is not spelled as Y A W E H. In the Hebrew spelling of Yahweh is a Y H W H. Now that will sound weird compared to English language that we are all used to, you know. It's Y H W H. And that, those letters have meaning. Amen. Those letters have what? Meaning. meaning. So, Yah Elohim, or Elohim, or Lord God. That's what it means in English. Lord God. Yah Elohim. Yahweh Elohim, pardon me. So, Lord God is the covenant name of God, showing that he is personal and has a relationship with the people he created. Okay? God could tell Adam, excuse me, you know, because why God was introducing himself, he introduced himself with a name. And there's a reason for that. Name is, your name is your identity. Unlike today where people just call themselves all kinds of names, but I mean, God does not introduce himself anyhow. He introduced himself with a name. You know, that's why you find uh, in Genesis chapter 2 verse 20, you know, where uh, God allowed Adam to name all the animals, you know. And in Jewish tradition, a name is much more than a name, as we see it today. You know, they believe that a name transforms a person's identity. Some people, if you ask, what is the meaning of their name now? They don't know. So if you don't know, you, your identity is actually hidden somewhere. You, you can't find it. Which is why so many names in the Old Testament describe the character of the person. So when Adam was asked to name the animals, the focus wasn't just on what they would be called, but on what they would become. Do you get it? The focus of naming was not what they just want to be called. Like by the grace of God, each of my children be, you know, while God was giving them to us, you know, I pray a lot and God gave me each of their names. And it typified certain experiences we're going through during those moments. You know, so, and if you look at the many of those names, it's, it is, it's, it's, it's with an intention of what those, each of them will become. Not just, oh, you must have a name. No, 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 no. Amen. 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 So Yahweh Elohim, the relational God, wanted to create alongside his creation, Adam. And the cool thing is that he still desires that today. Tell your neighbor, God still desires me. He wants to have a relationship with me. Amen. God has the answer to every problem in your life. He knows how to guide 
you. He knows how to make your business succeed. He knows, you know, how relationships work best and he knows how you should evangelize to your long lost friends. All he wants is for you to dream with him and create things together as a team. Amen. God wants you to create things together as a team. So he wants you. So two questions, then I close for today. What does your name mean? If you don't know, look it up online. Okay. Then in what, a second question is, in what areas of your life could you be creative with God? In what areas of your life could you what? Be creative with God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want to encourage us. I'm going to stop there today because I'm going to take it step by step, not rushing it. I want you to understand that God wants to have a relationship with you. No matter what you're going through, you know, no matter the pain you're going through, understand that the end purpose is so that he can have what a relationship with you he wants to speak with you even when you are feeling bad in those moments when you are crying he wants to talk to you in those moments when you are laughing he wants to talk to you in those moments when it's like oh, you don't know what to do he wants to talk to you that's why he put man in the garden and in the cool of the day, he will come and walk in the garden and come and say, Hey, Adam, how are you doing? How is the work today? Are you, able to, are you able to take care of the trees? What about the fish of the oceans? What about the animals? I hope the lion was not troubling you today. I hope the snakes were just behaving themselves. He come and they discuss. You know, until the bad guys came in and destroyed that relationship. But today, God still won that relationship. That's why man is not in extinct yet. Because we are the other part of heaven that God can talk to. He commands the angels, but he talks to us. We are the only species with the mind that have the capacity to have the mind of Christ. Out of all creations, we are the only species that can say, yes, I can make up my own mind. No other creation can say, okay, I want to make up my mind. You have no mind. But we have the mind. And most especially the Bible wants us to have the mind of Christ. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your word. And we pray that, Lord, you breathe on us so that as we go step by step on this study of your word, you will help us to achieve what you want us to achieve in it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.